On my recent review video about palm size JYE Tex DSO-150 oscilloscope kit for $20, I've got a comment from fellow John about new firmware update, which fixes the C offset on 0.1V test signal, simplifies button combinations for saving loading waveforms to or from the memory, fixes sometimes occurring frequency measurement error and other bugs. In this video, I'm going to show you how to properly update this device. To start with, you will need your DSO and a way of powering it, soldering iron with some solder, three jumper wires, PC and most importantly USB to serial UART interface, which lets your computer speak with the oscilloscope using serial communication. I've got counterfeit FD232R modules. I use them for programming Arduino Pro Minis. You can get these cheap on eBay, but any kind should work. All links for parts and software in the description. What is important that this adapter has to work in low voltage, because DSO150 uses 3.3 Logic aka LVTTL levels, and typical 5V can damage it. My adapter module on the back has 3 soldering pads for selecting operating voltage. By cutting trays between mid pad and 5V pad, then making connection to 3.3V side by adding solder like this, replugging power, we transform into low voltage transistor to transistor logic. If your module doesn't have this option and it is 5V logic, you will need 3 extra 1K resistors or any other same value resistors in that kilo ohm region for making a voltage divider on adapters transmitting pin. How to set it up later in this video. First, we have to install necessary software. Depending on what USB to serial adapter you have, you'll need to install a relevant driver. Just google your adapter's IC's name with the word driver. There are plenty of content explaining how to prepare these kind of adapters and Google is your best friend. Next, you'll need software that can work with the DSO's bootloader. It is called Flash Bootloader Demonstrator by SD. And of course, we need the new firmware. Head on to JYE Tech's website, go to DSO150, Firmwares, and press on the newest version. After download, extract the .hex file to your desktop. Now let's get on to the hardware setup. Open up the DSO case, take out the digital board and on the back side look for jumpers JP1 and JP2. We have to close them with a bit of solder. This will make the DSO start in bootloader instead of the main firmware at the next power up. Next we have to attach the USB to serial adapter. From the J5 pinout located at this edge, you could solder proper DuPont pins on the board like this, so making it more cable friendly. Connect oscilloscope's G and D pin to the module's ground pin. Data connections has to connect contrary to each other, so adapters RX signal to TX and TX straight to RX. As I mentioned, if your adapter is 5V logic, you will need to use those three 1K resistors. Join them in series, connect adapter's TX pin to one side and ground to other, though creating a simple voltage divider. The resistor junction closer to adapter's 5V TX pin will be your new signal point which is dropped down to around 3.3V. Now let's power up the oscilloscope, screen should light up and stay white. Connect USB adapter to your computer and launch the flash bootloader demonstrator. Select the adapter's COM port, set the baud rate to 115-200 and hit next. Screen with traffic light should pop up. If it's green, hit next. But if it's red, press on remove protection and proceed. If you're unable to get to this screen, try switching TX and RX pins on the DSO side. Common problem can be that the USB to serial adapter's driver is not working. Here's one way to test if it does function. Join adapter's TX pin to RX pin. In Arduino software open terminal screen, try sending any text and see if you get the echo. Whatever you send should get back. In the new screen, target should be set to 64K option. Hit next, select download to device option, locate your hex file from your desktop, choose erase necessary pages, Tick only optimize and verify after download and continue. Now you should see downloading data screen, turning green after it's done. 
That's it! Close the software, break JP1 and JP2 connections, put together the DSO and try repowering it. On the screen you should see new firmware name. Now we have updated the DSO. I can easily save and load waveforms because before I had no luck. While holding adjust knob and pressing second division button, we can save and with a trigger recall. Thank you guys for watching, hope this helped. Currently I'm in the process of figuring out my style of making videos. This was more organized and scripted video. I would appreciate any criticism or suggestions in the comments. Consider subscribing because I have new videos coming up like tutorial how to make this same DSO battery powered. That's it for now and bye!